Welcome to the RC Stories Garage. In this episode, I will show you how to configure advanced winch control with channel mixing using throttle priority on your rock crawler or trail truck. This is part two in a three-part series about configuring your DX5 rugged radio to control a winch. In the previous episode, I covered basic winch radio setup. In the next episode, I will cover channel mixing using winch priority. Even though I don't comp, I usually add a winch to my trucks because one, scale factor, and two, winching is fun. Winching in technical terrain can be tricky, especially if you like to film your adventures like I do. Throw strong drag brake, hill hold, or throttle matching FOC into the mix, and you have a recipe for chaos. Your truck will not freewheel, and you have to feather the throttle to match the speed of the winch, which can be tricky. To bring order to this chaos, it is possible to temporarily synchronize winch control with your throttle. I use radio transmitter channel mixing to achieve this wizardry. In this video, I will show you how to configure throttle priority mixing. I'm going to demonstrate with a Spectrum DX5 rugged radio but the concept should be applicable to other advanced radio systems as well. Here are the basic things you will need for this project. You need a winch with a built-in controller attached to an auxiliary channel of your receiver. Ideally, the winch controller needs to be able to work with a proportional signal, that is, at different speeds according to the signal sent by the radio. Most servo winches should be able to do this. The winch channel should be assigned to a three position momentary switch on your controller. I will put a link to basic winch setup in the video description, but we will also review this here. You will also want somewhere to test your winch setup. Performance will depend on several factors, including winch speed and strength, motor pinion combo, BEC and battery voltage, and the nature of the train you typically drive in. Getting the perfect setup will take some fiddling. This video will cover the following setup steps, and I'll put chapter links in the video description. One, terminology review. Two, preparing the radio transmitter. Three, using a radio input for normal winch control. Four, setting up channel mixing. Five, using a radio input to control mix activation. Six, Fine-tuning the mixing rate. Choose which radio inputs you want to use for winch control and channel mixing activation. Spectrum's terminology can be a little abbreviated and confusing. The DX5 Rugged has seven primary programmable inputs labeled A to G. Spectrum calls inputs A through D trims, and by default they are used for adjusting things like steering trim and throttle rate. But they can also be used as switches Inputs E and F can be programmed as two or three position switches. Input G can be programmed as a two position switch. There are two hidden assignable inputs, L and R, that I will touch on later. The steering wheel and throttle trigger are also inputs, but are obviously not assignable. I like to use E and F for shifting servos and G for momentary dig. In this demonstration, I will use D for normal winch control and C to activate channel mixing. By default, input C is assigned the throttle rate function. Since we don't want to be changing the throttle rate and activating channel mixing at the same time, we need to remove the default assignment. From the main screen, press OK to enter the function list. Scroll to rates and press OK. Scroll down to highlight steering in the channel selector. Scroll up to select Throttle and press OK. Scroll down to the On The Fly OTF trim assignment and press OK. Scroll down to Inhibit INH and press OK to set the selection. The C input no longer controls throttle rate. As a quick review, let's assign input D to winch control. This is done in the auxiliary assign menu item. If you are installing a new winch, starting this step with the winch line spooled all the way out is a good idea. 
from the main screen, press OK to enter the function list. Scroll to Auxiliary Assign and press OK. If your winch is not plugged into Auxiliary 1 channel of your receiver, then scroll down to the channel selector and press OK. Scroll to select the correct channel and press OK. Scroll down to the input selector and press OK. Scroll up to D and press OK. A note of caution here. It is possible to select the back L or clear R buttons in the input selector by accident. Make sure you exit the selector with the OK button. If you accidentally assign one of the L or R inputs, enter the channel selector and then press clear. This will restart the radio with the settings as they were at the last startup. You will lose any changes you made in this session, but won't have to start from scratch. This is the only way I have found to undo this mistake. The auxiliary assign screen can be quite buggy. The winch is now controlled by input D. This is a great time to test your basic winch control. In the center neutral zero position, the winch does nothing. The up and down positions, minus 100 and 100 on the monitor screen, spool the line in or out. If everything is working properly, Turn your radio off and then on again to completely save the settings. If you don't like the direction of this switch, you can change the channel setting in the reverse menu item, or wind the winch line all the way out and then back in again. Now let's set up channel mixing. You can have the truck powered on or off for this. It's safer to have it off, just in case something is configured weird. If you have it powered on, make sure the truck is secure and the wheels off the ground. From the main screen, press OK to enter the function list. Scroll to Mixing and press OK. Scroll down to the Mix Zero selector and press OK. This is the custom mixing setup screen. The master input will be copied to the slave output at the rate specified. We will turn the mix on and off with a switch. Scroll down to the master selector and press OK. Scroll up to Throttle and press OK. Scroll down to the Slave Selector and press OK. Scroll up to select the auxiliary channel your winch is connected to and press OK. Scroll down to the Rate Selector and press OK. Scroll down to set both rates to minus 50% to start with. The mix is enabled by default as indicated by Switch On. Let's go back to the main monitor a useful tool to see how it works. To access the monitor, press back until you are at the main screen and then scroll down. Note, the mixing main screen also has a channel monitor. Operate the throttle. Notice that when you move the throttle, the auxiliary channel output changes as well, in the opposite direction, but at 50% of the value. For example, forward throttle input of 50 results in auxiliary output of minus 25. Reverse throttle of minus 100 results in auxiliary output of 50. Again, let's test this setup with the truck on. When you use reverse throttle, the winch line should spool out. When you use the forward throttle, your winch line should spool in. If the winch line is going in the wrong direction, you will have to set the mix rate to positive values instead of negative one. It all depends on the direction the line is wound. We now have rudimentary throttle winch synchronization set up via channel mixing. Now let's assign mixing activation to the C input. On the custom mix setup screen, scroll down to switch and press OK. Scroll up to C and press OK. That's it. Input C will now act as a two position switch. Clicking right turns on the custom mix. Clicking left turns off the custom mix. You can reverse this behavior by inverting the zero and one boxes. Zero is left, one is right. Light is off, dark is on. The little dot below the boxes shows the current position of the switch. Scroll to select the one or zero. Toggle the on off behavior by pressing OK. The trim setting is not applicable to our use case. If it is set to active, then any trim setting applied to the master 
would be carried through to the slave, which doesn't make sense for winching. Input C now turns mixing on and off. Test it out by going to the monitor screen. Click input C in the on direction, default right. Mixing is on. Move the throttle and notice that the auxiliary output changes the rated amount. Click input C in the off direction, default left. Mixing is now off. Moving the throttle does not change the auxiliary output. This will be your normal driving mode. Now for the really cool part. Turn on mixing. Now you can control the winch proportionally with the throttle. And at the same time, you can spool the winch in and out independently of the throttle with the normal winch control. Input D, we set up earlier. Pretty neat, huh? Since the throttle winch mix is proportional, the more you pull the throttle, the faster the winch spools. Now is the time to fine tune the mix rate. Keep in mind that you most likely want to keep the winch line under slight tension at all times or risk a tangled mess of winch line. To maintain tension when driving forward, the wheels should be moving forward slightly slower than the winch line is pulling. When reversing, the wheels should move backwards slightly faster than the winch line is paying out. You will not be driving at full throttle while winching. This is a controlled precision operation. I will show you how to set forward and reverse mixing to different rates. Make sure the truck is secured with the wheels off the ground for this. On the custom mix setup screen, scroll down to rates and press OK. Pull the throttle to highlight the forward rate. Scroll up or down to adjust the rate. Push the throttle to highlight the reverse rate. Scroll up or down to adjust. Press OK to exit the rate selector. You only need to move the throttle a little bit to select the forward or reverse rate. Test out the speed. Spool out a meter of winch line and hold it tight or attach it to a solid anchor. Activate mixing. Use the throttle to slowly drive forward at the speed you'd normally winch. Does the line spool in at a reasonable speed? Reasonable means with constant tension, but not causing the truck to slide. If not, go back and adjust the forward rate. Test out the reverse speed. Spool out a few centimeters of winch line and hold it tight or attach it to a solid anchor at the top of an incline. Activate mixing. Use the throttle to slowly drive in reverse. Does the line spool out at a reasonable speed? Reasonable means with constant tension, but not forcing the truck to spin its tires. If not, go back and adjust the reverse rate. Once the mix rates are where you want them, you are done. Isn't this cool? You now have a very versatile winch setup. You can winch as you always have, for example, to pull a friend's truck out of a mud hole, or you can activate mixing and synchronize the throttle and winch, just like those PTO winches we see in full-scale off-road challenge competitions. However, there is one more setting you can adjust to get really smooth winch action. If you've noticed, normal winch control is very binary. That is, the winch is either off or going at full speed. You can adjust how fast the radio transitions from off to on using the speed menu item. The default speed is 100%, meaning the winch goes from off to on almost instantly. I currently have this setting at 50%, and it seems to nicely smooth out winch starts and stops. Dial this down to about 10% and you'd have the winch gradually get up to speed over about a one second period instead. This setting might be a bit extreme, 
but it lets us visualize the change. So, let's review what we've learned. First, we familiarized ourselves with the Spectrum DX5 Rugged's programmable inputs. Then we did some prep work. We practiced assigning an auxiliary winch channel to a radio input. We set up a custom channel mix so our winch action is synchronized with the throttle. We assigned an input to turn on and off our custom mix. Finally, we adjusted the rates of the custom mix so the throttle and winch are working in concert for maximum winch power and traction, in forward and reverse. I hope that channel mixing for throttle winch synchronization can be beneficial for you, whether you are comping or just having fun. There is a bit of a learning curve in the setup, so this video is a bit long. However, I want it to be as detailed as possible and not gloss over anything. But anyone with the right equipment and a little time and patience should be able to set up channel mixing. As always, if you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment. In the third and final installment of this series, I will show you how to configure your radio with winch priority channel mixing. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more RC Garage tips and run videos. Have fun and stay safe.